something I've noticed about Montana is there are so many awesome campsites. It leaves me reluctant to get going in the morning. Uh, we also didn't get a tremendous amount of sleep. Apparently, across the water was a live concert of some cover band that was not my favorite. Um, eventually, about 2 a.m., they did shut it down for the evening. So we were a little late getting them going in the morning, but we still really enjoyed that campsite. Knowing we had a lot of time to make up, we hit the road and started bombing through the hills. It's really beautiful terrain just slightly south of Canada. Now this beautiful piece of history is the Garver Mountain Lookout. I believe it is out of commission because it's now a rentable fire tower. You can get it from the National Forest Service. Uh, no one was occupying it when we got there and it was a little bit of a hike up there. Now, if you are able to rent this, then they give you a gate code and you can go through the gates. Uh, and if you have a vehicle with a little bit of ground clearance, preferably four wheel drive, you should be able to make it up the trail. There's a obviously a beautiful view, except we were here when it was all smoky. Um, there's also a couple fire pits and a uh, picnic table down below and a little porta potty, uh, or I guess vault toilet in this case. I really wish we had been able to see this whenever it was a clear day. I can only imagine how far you could see. But I've always wanted to check out one of these larger fire towers. We don't have anything like this in the southeast. So it was really fun to explore this. As you can see, it's locked and we weren't able to get up inside the fire tower itself. From the looks of it, there's a padlock and it's probably the same code that gets you through the gate. But it was still pretty neat to see. I have no idea what these little rock structures are, but there's a couple of them around the top of the mountain. I don't know if these were made prior to the fire tower or after, but uh, just kind of neat to see them. This is what the road looks like at the top. There is a couple of steeper sections, but anything with a little bit of ground clearance, a uh, small SUV, something like that, should have no problem making it up here. Soon after leaving the fire tower, we came across our first trail obstacle. This little tree was across and we probably could have pulled it out of the way of the winch, but I carry an electric chainsaw and it has no problem going through a tree like this. If you are going to bring a chainsaw on a trail, make sure you bring the proper PPE, uh, closed toed shoes, chaps to keep your legs protected and uh, don't just go running out there in chacos like me. Also, be sure to check your local laws. Uh, in this part of the burn ban, we weren't allowed to use a gas chainsaw. Good morning. So yesterday, after we got off the trail, we found a pretty decent little campsite. It was tight to fit three vehicles, but not a bad site at all. Um, did some swimming, because we're back on the same lake that we started at yesterday. And yeah, cooled off, did some swimming, made dinner. Didn't really film a whole lot. Um, but while sitting around dinner last night, we decided that the smoke was getting too bad. I'll walk down to the water here in a minute and show you what we've been dealing with, but we're all kind of sinusy, got headaches, and the smoke is really thick right here. So I think we're gonna bail. Um, we're gonna take off, run pretty much due south, and then run east over to Kalisbell um, and begin to work our way somewhere less smoky. That may mean we run all the way to South Dakota, uh, and go spend some time around Custer. Um, we don't know. We're just going to start driving, get away from the smoke, and kind of see where we end up. Check this out. There's a big fire ring right there overlooking an island. But this is why we're leaving. It's just so smoky. Like I said, we're all feeling the effects, the headaches and sinuses, and it's just, uh, it's not ideal.
20. On our way out of town, we passed the Libby Dam. This is the dam that holds back all the water for the Kukanusa Lake, the one we've been camping on the last couple days. Well, it has been a long day of driving, it's not over yet. We are working our way down towards uh, Idaho. We're gonna catch the edge of it before entering into West Yellowstone. That's the current plan, it may change. Um, we just finished up dinner with some friends in Missoula, and as you can see, the smoke is uh, it's definitely not getting any better. So we're gonna keep running south, uh, work our way a little bit more east, and just see kind of what we get into. That's the nice thing about being flexible. You know, when you're camping, you don't have, or when you're boondocking at least, you don't have specific dates, you have to be a certain thing. So, um, we are able to change plans and make it work. So, we are still trying to escape the smoke. We'll let you know how it goes. Good morning. So, I actually don't know exactly where we are. Um, I looked at some maps and some of the waypoints from Venture Four Wheel Drive, and he had the spot recommended. It's called Mill Creek Campground. Um, it's not too far from Virginia City, just outside the west gates of Yellowstone. And he had it us reading his description, and he was you know highly recommended. And now I can see why free campsites, a really nice vault toilet, and beautiful terrain. We even see a little bit of blue skies, which we haven't seen in a couple days due to the smoke. So, still a little bit of a haze, but uh, definitely looking like today is going to be a better day. But this campsite, it's really, really pretty. If you do come, make sure you have some leveling blocks. Each of the campsites is a little bit uh, uneven, but they have a water pump, so you can pump up the the water get what you need um, they each have their um, campering fire rings and picnic tables and yeah really really nice quiet and there's even a creek not too far away that you can listen to so we're gonna finish getting packed up and make our way towards Yellowstone Welcome to Virginia City. In 1865, Virginia City was named the territorial capital of Montana. At its peak, around 10,000 people flooded this area, named the 14 Mile City for its numerous settlements that lined the gulch. Virginia City became one of the largest settlements with an estimated population of 5,000 by around mid-1864. There are two little towns here, Virginia City and Nevada City. They lie about a mile apart. This area in the Alder Gulch is estimated to have pulled out more gold than almost anywhere else in the Rocky Mountains. There's an estimated to total value of around $100 million throughout 18th and 19th century. They are some really cool preserved Old West towns and we enjoyed driving through and we can't wait to come back and explore all the little shops. Oops. 
Coming up next time on Scenic City Adventures, we finally make our way into Yellowstone. In spite of the crazy wind and the smoke, we get to see a lot of really cool animals, some beautiful views, and eventually make our way towards South Dakota. So you don't want to miss it. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.